one of the things we're very excited about here at Carlson is the ability to do precision GIS right inside of Esri MXD files. So let's take a look at opening an MXD directly in Serve PC. When you start a job or start Serve PC, you have the opportunity to select a new or existing file. In this case, let's change our type to ArcMap Doc, navigate to the folder with the MXD in it, select that MXD, check that. We need to tell the software where this is located. In this case, we happen to know it's in the Illinois East. Uh, we can add that if it's not in our list by selecting Add Predefined here, scrolling down to Illinois East and adding it there. Um, once we've done that, it'll read the file. Now while it's reading the file, it's reading in all of the attribute information about points, lines, and polygons from the file. All that intelligence is being read into Serve PC, and we can use it in a variety of ways. We'll just uh, OK this error message here. It's not going to affect what we're doing. And now, let's take a look at what happened. So if we look at the feature code list, we're going to see all the coding in the file, whether the points are on lines or not, all the information, uh, attribute information has been read in, and we can use that in a variety of different ways. Let's load the map here by clicking on the globe icon and select one of the address data points, say the, the green ones that have an A in them, and you'll see that we know a lot of things about this point, all the things that were in the GIS, its location. If we edit the attributes, we're seeing all of the information about that file or about that point, and we can make changes to it and store them now. So very easy to get into the file. One of the things that you'll need to do if you're going to go out and use GPS for surveying in the file is to localize. And we'll uh, simulate that by using our GPS simulation in here uh, in our demo mode. And to do that, we'll go to localization, and we're going to pick a point in the file and have the software approximate localization for us based on that. So we'll set our snap to endpoint, pick the end of one of these property lines, and then go ahead and average a bunch of shots simulating a GPS localization. You can see it's going to take 10 readings and then offer us the opportunity to store a localization file, which we have as LOC. And um, once that file has been stored, we can use it again. So if we go out in a couple of days and want to go to work, we can just load that file and not go through the process of localization that's already been done. So now that we're localized, we're ready to go to work. And we can go right into the file now and survey directly in here. First thing we're going to look at is, what if one of the points was located in the wrong place? We'll jump into survey, we'll go to store points, and let's pick one of these address points. And you'll see that the triangle is approximating our location as we walk along the site. Well, we're going to remeasure that point. Now the triangle's moving along, up arrow goes faster, down arrow goes slower, right, left control the direction. And let's go ahead and hit enter or the S to take a shot about now. And this is going to locate that point at the new location. You can see it's new coordinates. Green check mark to accept that. And watch now. It stored the point and it shifted it to where our location of where the triangle was. And now we have access to change any of the attribute information about that point. So the corrections need to be made there. And we're ready to go ahead and store. Now again, remember we looked at all that coding got read in. Let's go to the code list from the helmet, just a different way to do it. Lots of different ways to do things in Carlson, lots of flexibility. So the first few shots, point types don't have line work on them, but this one does. It's a railroad, 8MXD is a railroad. So if we take shots and code them as 8MXD instead of 6MXD, it's automatically going to know that that's a railroad. So the points along there when it draws them, it's going to connect them with a line that is formatted as a railroad uh, symbology. So let's take a couple of shots here. Again, we're navigating. Up arrow goes faster. Down arrow goes slower. Left, right uh, to move to the left or the right. Um, and here we go. We've taken uh, two shots. We'll take one more. And then let's zoom up and look at what happens. Now let's zoom in. And it's formatted as a railroad. This happens for all the formatting in this Esri file fantastic tools 
Carlson.